That's unfortunate. Yeah, I used to do uh, Scarewinds. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did a season of Scarewinds there, and I lost my job because I told, I mean. Because why? <laughs> Go on. Go ahead. I told this lady. <laughs> Go on. I want to figure out who's the piece of shit at the end of this conversation. Because <laughs> he's coming off. Like, if we're going to do this, like I'm going to say this. I'm going to get the full story. It's right, like why right. she was who she was. Okay. Doesn't exist today anyway. Oh. Hello <laughs> and welcome to Strange Happy Hour. I am one of your hosts, Brent the Jester Head Metcalf, along to the front of me. Look at him in the cute little TAC, cult. Theodore Harrington. The third. Off to my right. <laughs> what is it? Collinsworth. Collinsworth, thank you. The Jesus. third. John Penn, a handsome John. And on my left, the dispatcher, Mark Plover. Of course, we are here to bring you the nerdy video game and tech news each and every week on this very Tuesday when we record. You get it on Friday. However, there is so much news to talk about. We actually don't have time to talk about all of that. We can't talk about the fact that there are two Pakistani girls who were denied U.S. visas. And rather than about it, they made a video game about it. Very, very cool. Uh, okay, we that's have neat. time to talk about the fact that the Untitled Goose Game devs are donating 1% of their overall revenue this from this point going forward to the Aborigine people of Australia. We also don't have time to talk about the fact that Netflix has announced a live action One Piece series. Why would we talk about it? Yeah, it's going to be exactly, awful. Yeah. However, we do have time to talk about on this very show each and every week while we gather around this table drinking these delicious beers, what we like to call the, the important, important shit. Man, we're just on par. Look at that. We're so good. We're so good, guys. I just have to not look at you. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I'm going to go ahead and go first because when do I ever go first? Never. Not much. Uh, it not looks much. like Microsoft is starting a really cool program for Xbox Live players. It is called the Bug Bounty Program. So this program allows players who are on the system, they have to have a gold membership so that way they can play online, to find these bugs and I believe get a little bit of credit for doing so. so yeah, anywhere between five hundred and twenty thousand dollars Yeah. Money they can use. Yeah. So these have to be real bugs through Xbox Live. So we're not talking about like an individual game. Yeah, that's so that's what I was curious about. Yeah. You know, like I can't so imagine Microsoft would take responsibility for, looking their for developers, vulnerabilities. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100 percent Yeah, yeah. So uh to quote their actual article here, um which came from Kotaku. The statement that Xbox gave is the Xbox bounty program invites gamers, security researchers, and others from around the world to help identify security vulnerabilities in the Xbox Live network and services and share them with the Xbox team. Qualified submissions are eligible for bounty rewards of $500 to $20,000. To be eligible for these awards, submissions will need to meet two criteria. First, the reported vulnerability needs to be original and reproducible in the latest version of Xbox Live. Second, it needs to include a clear guide for how Xbox Live network engineers can re replicate this. Interesting. So what I found fascinating about this is they're basically open sourcing yeah. a lot of their security needs in order to try and find the fastest. I mean, it'd be interesting if somebody finds a big, a big old hole and shuts down the network in the process of doing so. And it's just sort of like, <laughs> hey, by the way, this is how I did it. That kind of thing. I'll take my twenty grand, please. Yeah, no, no, seriously. Yeah. Um, or they get, or the guy gets sued. One of the other. One of the two. Well, I mean, there's a guy that just got sued for hacking Nintendo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's that. I feel like there's a little bit of leeway here, which is this is actually an interesting point. Like, do they open themselves up well, to more vulnerabilities? I, I now? think actually now you've set a precedent for yourself of like we're literally asking you to hack Correct. us. So. Maybe there's some legal protection there. And, you know? Well, and I feel like that's good for them for the most part until you get trolls who don't care about the money. Mm. The hack is fine as long do. as you come to them with everything going on. If not, it's not sanctioned. Yeah, yeah, And it, I'm sure it also depends on what you do with the hack. Well, so, yeah, I, I really hope hack that nobody up. would do anything like malicious like that. I mean, because if you get far enough into a system where you should be telling Microsoft before you get to that point of reading the data, I feel like, you know, you should... Well, it, if you're like, trying to there's, see there's exactly a limit. how far you can go. There's a limit, probably, as far as you should go with this, that kind of thing, as far as this program is concerned, quote, unquote. Yeah, I mean, once you access people's names, you know, account numbers, addresses. Credit card numbers. Credit card numbers. So, uh, well, there's no socials, but. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you pretty much reach the plethora of information that is the most vulnerable to them. Yeah. Oh, 100%. But, like, the, the idea would be 
if Did you, you already kill if you, that? Yes. If you've gotten to that he's point. He's a man, he's a man, he's a truck, truck, truck man. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you get to that point, like, I'm, I'm wondering where the limit is of, like, how far you can go Did with. you just give him a logger? That's next in line. Oh. We ha- it's, all, it's all organized, okay? Okay. You and me, buddy, to the face. We got this. Aim for the bushes. <laughs> Aim for the bushes. <laughs> Aim for the bushes, indeed. <laughs> Continue your thought. Anyway, um... I feel like there should be a limit on this. I feel like they should have like program guidelines that says, you know, you will not take this information, this, that, the other, that this does still have legal repercussions. Shutting down the service would be a protected item, that kind of thing. Um, like certain things are like, don't do this or we will sue you kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and I'm also re- I'm wondering, is this a register service? Like, do they do you have to sign up for this or do you just automatically have have access to it, I guess, as a... A gold member. I would imagine there is some registration in the sense of like when you come to turn something in, you're going to have to go through a process well, yeah, in yeah. which it'll be vetted. But I don't believe that there's anything outside of that because this is not. I don't know if there was a pre registration that says like I, they want to know how many people are actually trying to do this. I don't thing. think so. They have the similar program that's been around since 2017 for Windows. So they're basically yeah, just yeah. carrying that through over yeah. to this, which makes a lot of sense, especially with the new console on its way yeah. coming in yeah, we're yeah. about to reach the point where there's gonna be a lot of uncertainty on how these systems handle stuff so i mean make it a lot of sense so i find it interesting that they're doing this because they really are putting their chips forward and to me this is an interesting thing to see considering microsoft is one of the world leaders in information security or yes. information technology or it security specifically like well, they it's have, also a flaunting too. It's like, well, has no one uh, even has turned anything in yet either? By the way, well, <laughs> well yeah, I mean that, that's part of it. But like Microsoft has done loads and loads about uh, of of uh, presentations and and you know tours of their security headquarters, which literally monitors live for global uh, internet attacks. Doesn't that seem a little weird that you're going to let people come in free willy into your security center? That's the way Mark likes it. <laughs> well, but I mean, like all you, can see, all you can see are the dashboards of what they're looking at and this, that, or the other and how to do that, unless you're like getting passwords. And I mean, if you're stuff, a hacker, you can read those dashboards. It's hacker. Exactly. That's how that works. That, you probably have an armband that has a really cool diode and you're just like, hack the mainframe. <laughs> on a video that, that's published three months after it was Correct, recorded. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's how that works. <laughs> I have to no, say, trying to chug this just made it way <laughs> more intensified. I can tear it out. If oh you finish God. it, you get a nice refreshing locker. I, I wanted it so bad. So bad. <laughs> <laughs> we're drinking pain. some IPAs and two of us at the table are not big fans. Uh, um, this is, though. What I do find fascinating about this is that not only is this not exclusive to Xbox within the company itself, but apparently Valve and Rockstar Games have similar programs. And Nintendo has a maximum payout for their own program of twenty thousand dollars. However, Sony only gives away a free T-shirt. <laughs> hey, it says for you. secure at Sony Finder. So that explains why the two times that they got hacked, it went, they went for the credit card information, not the free T-shirt. And this also <laughs> explains why Sony is the saying. PlayStation Network went down for 23 days after it was first breached in 2011. So, yeah, yeah. Not I remember you were really. so bad when that happened. I was so mad because I just got a game that could play online. <laughs> I was like, it was Living Planet. I was like, I just want to play on the network. Apparently, SOCOM came out like a week before the network went down. Oh man! And then they closed the studio. Hmm. Wonder how that happened. Oh, that's a shame. I liked SOCOM for uh, PlayStation Two. Yeah. Well, you can remember <laughs> the PlayStation Two because it's not coming back. <laughs> oh. uh, Anyways, oh uh, I am fascinated to see what comes out of this, and if we do see Sony possibly adopt something similar, it's very obvious they're kind of behind when it comes to their competitors. I mean, otherwise, you know, anybody who does hack their system isn't going to tell them. They're just going to take yeah, stuff. Absolutely. They're going to shut things down. They're going to take stuff. They're going to be trolls. But realistically, they're also not going to get the honest people who are going to come in and try to hack them. So This is true, but I mean, I feel like if there's enough financial incentive, you know... Yeah, if you're getting to the credit cards, there's probably more financial incentive if you know how to sell that. But if you don't, and you're just getting there, well, yeah, why would you not? A, so Tor is an easy browser to download and just find a dark I, website. I'm I, just saying. I know, but I'm just saying if you don't want to go through that hassle, oh, telling yeah. Microsoft, be like, hey, I found this 20 Gs. Like, that's a pretty good day's worth right there. Yeah. Thanks, guys. I mean, I'm just saying flying to India to sell $100,000 worth of you know credit card information and personal information that's it's really worth it in the long run it depends on how much effort you want to put behind it it's true there are some days i don't like getting out of bed yeah it's true 
Sad sauce. Because then you have to take a shower, you have to pee, you have to let the dog out. There's a lot of stuff you have to do once you get out of bed. I haven't even got to the point of getting in a vehicle, <laughs> going on an airplane, yes. going to India, you know. That exactly. Kind of That's yeah. a lot. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Moving on and keeping in the theme of Xbox, we're going to go to Handsome John to talk about the Xbox Game Pass quests that are happening. Yeah, it's actually very... Oh, you got that. Come man, on. I put a lot down in that Finish one go, and it didn't feel good. Like I can vamp for you while you... While you Chug it God, like a real man. <sighs> I'm so proud of him. Look at him. He's so big and burly and hairy. Oh. <laughs> Careful, he's getting aroused. I think the table's lifted up on that side. <laughs> Not by much, I though. didn't want to have to swish it before drinking it. <laughs> oh, God, man. man. And it smells like 420. It smells like Team Spirit. <laughs> Team Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Uh, it's actually called Xbox Game Pass Quest, mm -hmm. and X it's a, it's basically Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. And a console plan membership can earn Microsoft points by playing games from the Xbox Game Pass library, and basically use these points to get real world items or games or in in app purchases for games and whatnot. And um, you just participate in all these achievements that they give you. Uh, whether it's playing a game for so long, you get an achievement, you get so many points, and then you can build them up and get real world items. That's pretty cool. Well, yeah. What's cool is that the quests rotate, so they're not always the same. Yeah. As you get those points, you're able to track them on an app, so you can turn them in that way, or you can keep uh, a track of them with an Xbox membership. Like you can't see it on the Xbox itself. I don't think you have to go yeah. into like onto you a can web see browser. like the top five. Okay, well there you go. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah look at but it, it stays only. It doesn't. You would have to go. You would have to exit out of the game to see all your achievements, or through the app. No, oh, yeah. So yeah, you get X. You have to get the Xbox Rewards app in order to take these points and turn them into something. But what I find super interesting about this is the by, fact that just to clarify, by app you mean Xbox app, not phone app. No, no, it is the Xbox Rewards app. I assume yeah. that it is probably a phone On the app. app. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Sony so, has uh, a Sony. <laughs> brand rewards app and it's not just for playstation it's for sony products in general hmm. um and so i'm actually part of this which is going to be one of my points is that uh, i have a playstation credit card i use that credit card specifically because it gets me points that i can then turn into purchases on the playstation so gotcha. i can pay for my ps plus for a year mm -hmm. i can pay for new games i can pay for all kinds of stuff via those points gotcha okay. and so at one point in time, the w one of the programs the credit card had is that as you earn trophies, you could get points. So, like, for 100 bronze trophies, you got 100 points. Not worth it. But, like, uh, 10 – or it was uh, 50 silver led to 100 points. 10 platinum led to 500 points. And all that just kind of accrued. So, as I was going on my normal adventure through playing games, I was getting points that I could then use to buy stuff on the PlayStation Network. They got rid of it. It was like a temporary program. But how – cool would it be if playstation stole this it yeah well no playstation had it and then dropped the ball it well, was stupid but they but it required like they hit it so so far away from it like whereas the the barrier of entry was you had to be able to sign for a credit card yeah and that in itself was already super Correct. limiting it was just something to get like uh, i guess kind of play the waters without having to get too deep into it but if Xbox does this right. It's going to bring a lot of people absolutely into this ecosystem, and it doesn't sound like a big deal right now, which is why we're talking about it in the important shit. Boop. But its ability to grab people who are achievement hunters like we are, and also benefit from it when you have a Game Pass where you can play basically unlimited games whenever you want, however you want, like it, with that kind of flexibility, it's going to be a, a big deal. Yeah, in their ecosystem, and I think it's going to be a it's going to become a big deal. Like achievements and trophies were when they were introduced. I think it's going to be that next step. Yeah. Well, and Microsoft's program expands ju past the Xbox as well. Like if you use Bing and you tie your account yep. to it, you get five points per search. If that. every dollar you spend on the actual Windows Store is a point towards your account, like all these things accrue. So okay. over time, as you naturally, I know. It really shows how hard they're trying to push I know, Bing here. I know. Yeah. One dollar is one point, but one search five is five points. points. 
One <laughs> search is worth five dollars. But the point is here, like as they continue to push this, it has you wanting to do more, right? Yeah. So as you're wanting to do more, you're able to go ahead and and just kind of get yourself involved in the ecosystem. You don't want to leave. Yeah, but, and don't get me wrong, it is super enticing, even as me as a PlayStation fanboy, to get an Xbox Series X because I don't have an Xbox X or an Xbox, Xbox One. one. In general. So to want to play, and granted, we could play via PC if I had one. Um, <laughs> and you wouldn't have to worry about that. But at the same time, like, I'll be able to play all these other games and I could just use my PlayStation for its exclusives. I'm curious if that because works. Because there's going to be more to draw me as a benefit to playing more in the e Xbox ecosystem. Yeah. I can still trophy hunt. I can still get my trophies for what I play on PlayStation. No big deal. And there's achievements on Xbox. I'm fine with it. I just want something that's fluid, easy, and not janky. Yes, 100%. Yeah. And that's my one worry is like, we'll see how it, everything goes once it's released. Yeah. But it sounds great on paper right now. Yep. I'm curious if that also falls over to uh, Microsoft app or Microsoft games that are available mm. on Steam. For example, the Halo mm. Master Chief collection is available on Steam, if I recall. That is a really good I, question. If I remember correctly, I don't remember I you, you are correct. That. You are correct. I don't think so. I remember I'm seeing because, like, if I, you play on on. The I probably I would assume the Windows version you would. Well, you, that's the idea. Is it's the Windows version available through Steam, that kind of thing. So, mm. uh, like, but it's not from the Microsoft App Store. Now you do have to sign in with your Microsoft account. If you do, you probably get. So I probably still then. get achievements through the Microsoft system. That if way. you Correct. get achievements, then yes. Yeah, I, I would say uh, would count. Um, uh, my buddy. Uh, or you can backdoor it. Turn on your Xbox and it shows all the achievements, and maybe you'll get all those uh, achievements knocked off. Boop, yeah. Boop, 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 boop. Now, my buddy Travis and I, he, uh, well, we, were, we were going through the campaign on Halo 3 the other day. Oh, our, nice. Uh, a couple weeks ago, so. IPs are, uh, how do you people drink this shit? Oh, man, you're so close. You're so close to that. <sighs> Just chug it. Chug. I chug, have it. Chug. Chug. That's why I have a headache. But I, I also think, I mean, quite Awful. frankly, every ecosystem should adopt this simply because it's super cheap for them. It's not very expensive on their end. Yeah. Because the amount that you have to put into it usually would cover whatever this cost is. But as a person who's involved in it, it makes you feel good. And at the same time, you do get a little bit of return for your consumer there, right? Yeah. So, again, like, I have to spend... So I get 10 points... Like 10 now. times... It does. <laughs> <laughs> 10 times the points if I purchase stuff on the PlayStation Network. So I have to spend my own money to get those points. And eventually I'll get some sort of feedback loop there where I get a little bit back in return. Right. It's a little bit... But if I'm already going to spend that money anyways, yeah. then yeah, it's totally worth it to me. Yeah. And that keeps me involved with their credit card system, with everything else. I'm making sure that I am purchasing Sony. So I think 100% every every network should do this in the, yeah. in the sense of like, hey, you've got an ecosystem. You've got people there. You want them to stay here. Now, yeah, yeah, yeah. obviously, if PlayStation jumps on board and does some kind of arrangement, it's going to look really bad because it looks like they're just trying to you know keep up with Xbox's <laughs> ideas and whatnot. They're but, not at all afraid of that. They have, uh, did, yeah. they have literally jumped on every bandwagon. It's just, I'm just saying, if they do, that's what it's going to look like because that's exactly what it is. <laughs> but, uh, we but they, came they, out and they're like, move controllers, everybody. We got you. <laughs> I say this. They've got enough of a market share. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Uh, yeah, 100%. I mean, they're definitely getting a, a PS5 out of me. Yeah, so, I mean, whether I go to the Xbox Series X, they're going to have to, I'm going to have to see if it's. They're going to kill you to make it a PS5. Yep. <laughs> got to take my core <laughs> self and make a PS5 out of me. Somehow I'll make a PS5 out of you. Wow. Mulan, in case Moe's wondering. Not the modern one, because there's no music. I it. know. Who decided these things, Disney? What is wrong with you? No, actually, Mulan's like the only live action movie where I was like, I'm actually kind of interested. Yeah, in that. yeah, yeah it yeah. actually looks like it's going to be Because they actually decided they were going to do it right of like, hey, it's a live action. Probably shouldn't be a big old musical. Yeah, well, they're like, hey, we're just going to redesign it in a way that makes sense. I'm like, oh. Well, I mean, the music in itself, a lot of it was like dealing with the warriors and like the tune. So you're still going to get a lot man. of that in the background, you know? I but, hope. Complete another segue from our time. Are we done talking about Xbox reward program? Yeah, think, not much yeah, to talk I think we're on the same page. I really hope there's a sequence in their training where there's not the actual song playing, but the sounds of them training comes together in a way that sounds like the rhythm yeah. of that song because uh, that would be so that, cool. To me, that's how I would do it. That's what I'm saying. I think that's how they're going yeah. to do it because it just makes more sense. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I said every podcast, little, little Disney, hints of like, hire me. reaching back out, that kind of thing. Yeah. 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 I just want somebody to hire me, please. <laughs> 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 Moving on to our final topic of the show, which means we may we may have a bonus topic at the end of this because it's a little short. Uh, is wow. the dispatcher with? Why do you gotta make fun of Mark like that? Something going on with Google Maps. I actually read this article today before we put it up 
or uh, before I saw that you put it up in the thing. Yeah. And I was dying, rolling, laughing. Yeah. yeah. So I'm really surprised that this work uh, worked. Um, so uh, uh, TLDR, I guess at the front end of this, is uh, an artist used 99 cell phones in a wagon, literally, that he toted across a bridge back and forth uh, with Google Maps navigation on, created a traffic jam on Google Maps on that bridge, and it emptied. Like, literally everyone who was using navigation did not drive across that bridge. Because, because every, I mean, uh -huh. Waze and everything else was steering them clear of it. Exactly. Um, so it, it's, uh, it was from artist Simon Weckert. Um, and uh, basically, he, like, he's an artist, but he wanted to sort of show, like, how easy it is to manipulate some of the systems any way that we take such heavy advantage of that kind of thing Absolutely. and sort of understand that, you know, even though, like, we may use Google Maps to navigate back and forth to work, to home, whatever, that kind of thing on a regular basis, sometimes the information that we get isn't always the most valid. And that applies to everything, not just navigation specifically, but it is such a big system that he was able to manipulate like this very easily, you know. Um, you could make a lot of money doing this. Oh. I mean, yeah. yeah. It's absolutely. like have a paid service. It's like, tell me when you need the bridge. <laughs> I need this. Oh, actually, that'd be great to pay someone. Just literally buy 99 used like Samsung mm -hmm. Galaxy S3s or something yeah. like that. Yeah. Within the week, you would have paid for yourself. But you you'd know. have saved yourself so much time going across that bridge uh -huh. every single day. You know, for a fact, this is going to come up in some Michael Bay movie <laughs> where they're like, we got to clear the bridge. <laughs> it's just going to be someone in a wagon like, this is stupid. And then it works. And it's like, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Blow up the bridge. I was going to say that. The bridge explodes yeah, exactly. and that's what happens. Yeah. That's yeah. the end of the movie. Absolutely hysterical. I, I thought it was great. It, it's his sentiment. I agree with very much so of like we take very heavy advantage of these things and they're very easy to exploit sometimes just based on basic use. Oh, absolutely. You know, but um, yeah, not even a technical aspect. This is literally using it as it was intended. He yeah. just yeah was able to manipulate it in yeah. that regard. Although it also confirmed to me how Michael or, or My Michael Maps, yeah, Google Maps gets their uh, uh, navigation data, or traffic data because like I always kind of assumed that they use some of the crowdsourcing for it, but I wasn't sure how many people actually use Google Maps on a regular basis to give that information yeah. off that kind of thing so I thought it was kind of neat uh, obviously like, he outweighed everybody else yeah in that region for yeah. sure <laughs> so let us know if you're going to yourself going to use this technique to and make traffic let me know when work. you want the bridge cleared because yes. it's only five ninety nine a day and you'll be home five hundred ninety nine dollars no five dollars just five dollars wow. up front a piece, a piece. I mean, you think about a hundred people do that man I just made a grand that day and I just worked for an hour that's fair that's fair. Are they all coming within an hour? Because that might create its own traffic jam. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Like, within that hour piece, even all the people that would pay for that service would still get through that bridge lickety split, no problem. Okay. All right. I'm with you. Let us know in the comments floating above me. Hello. Like a harpy. If you're going to clear a bridge with Google Maps. Well, as long as you have a Garden War style harpy, those are kind of violent. They're fucking terrifying with their metal wings. Uh, so very rarely in this show do we finish our topics that fast. Succinctly. So I actually am going to dive into a slight bonus topic and it's not going to be one topic but rather a culmination. So I'm going to read these headlines and we'll discuss something real quickly. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of news involving Blizzard this week and yeah. that's one of the reasons why I want to talk about it. Um, that's why I steer clear of it. For one, <laughs> they've canceled Overwatch League's matches in China due to the coronavirus. No surprise there. Futurally that, that known sense. as the Bud Light virus. They are all also currently working on a system in which they're going to allow for um, a rotation of characters in Overwatch. So no longer will you have the entire roster to select from every period of time. I think it's two weeks. There's going to be a selection of them that are available for you to play. At. This is great because in other games where you would choose a character and your other teammates could or other te other pe uh, other opposing teammates or the people you're going to beat the shit out of couldn't also be a uh, pick that yeah. particular person. So you were stuck having to choose someone else, which I always thought was pretty strategic because in games where you can pick the same people, like, Oh, some two sub zeros fighting each yeah. other. <laughs> and it's like, at least pick Scorpion. Which like somebody pick Scorpion. Well, I find this super fascinating because specifically in these larger competitive games, there are certain characters that like are frowned upon simply because they are overpowered. Yeah. Genji yeah. for a long time, Genji mains were made fun of and probably still are in overwatch. Our resident uh, Overwatch 
fan slash friend Ellen is not here to give me the advice on this. I have not spoken to her about <laughs> it, but I planned on it. Yeah. Um, but I think this is fascinating simply because you can cut out a fourth of the roster and then force players to really learn. Yeah. Now, it sucks for anybody who's stuck to one character and really likes it, but if you like the game, you're able to kind of learn and adapt oh, yeah. and change well, over time. But I mean, that's something that you have to learn if you're going to play the game, that kind of thing. Uh, like, so the rotation, I think, is kind of cool, but also kind of bad at the same time. I'm assuming that the full roster is still going to be available from custom games and that kind of thing, because... Otherwise, well, pro teams are going to pitch a yeah. king fit. Yeah, because yeah. they got uh, to practice and stuff. Well, exactly. No, but here's the thing: like, it's it's a weekly rotation, and they said that they can change it. It could be a weekly rotation, a daily, an hourly, or a game by game basis. Like, they're just playing with it right now. No, no, no. I mean, that's that's fine. It, like, there's still some things they're gonna have to figure out with that. I, I'm just saying that they're gonna have big but names I think it makes that are gonna it press super back. interesting because it's like you know it brings you out of and and I'm starting to do it a lot with Modern Warfare. I'm not totally a sniper person. I always hated mm -hmm. the snipers in Call of Duty because I felt like they were cheap. Everybody was quick sniping. I'm never going to win that battle because I'm never going to learn that skill. Yeah. So I just don't deal with it. I go in with a run of gun. So, and that works out for me. But sometimes, like, they made maps where you kind of sometimes may want to overkill it and have an assault rifle and a sniper rifle in, when you're in certain situations. That's, I arrived an entire like a custom kit just for that. So. Yeah. <laughs> Literally just for certain levels, you have certain loadouts yeah. because of the situations that you get put in. And so I had to learn different skills, which I actually really started to appreciate because I started becoming better with them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I could totally understand where they're coming from and it gives more diversity to the games because if everybody likes the same exact characters, you don't get much diversity in your game. Some people are okay with that because they're fine tuning their skills at this yeah. point in time where others are like, this is just getting boring. So they're trying to mix it up to where it's like, try something new. They also like. could be white supremacists because they don't like diversity in their games. Uh, I don't <laughs> think that I agree with that mainly because I don't feel like getting sued. <laughs> More Blizzard news come from the fact that the Warcraft 3 Remastered, which is called the Reforged Edition, uh, is apparently uh, has custom game settings that were, uh, Blizzard will now own all the custom games. So Dota specifically was a custom game that spun off of the Warcraft original. Interesting. And so they lost uh, a lawsuit trying to win that back under their umbrella. The, like years ago, years ago. Was it like just somebody like internally did a fork or no, externally? Took externally, a like a play, a group oh. of players started the, the Dota games and then it spun off to its own game and then they tried to sue them for it and lost. Well, I guess, I mean, 30% is the rule for, for trademark copies like that. So I'm curious how that works for them if they... They must have changed it enough to where well, it wasn't the same. Now it is 100% they have pure ownership of it. So there's oh, no yeah, split. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is now there's a legal precedent. If they yeah. sued and they lost, I mean, there's legal precedent on that now. Oh, I have, yeah. I have no idea what the, the story would be there. We'd have to dig into it. Yeah. Maybe we'll do an investigative report. Isn't it like you have to I change 10% of something in order for it not to be the same thing? 30%. But 30%. Um, you it, also it depends need... on how they're copywriting the game, too. So yeah. if they copyright the game as a whole and all the characters inside of it, we change 30% of that game, suddenly it's a different game and you can own IP for that. To some extent, you can't own the original source code. That that's an entirely yeah. different thing. Yeah. But um, uh, like, if the individual characters are copyrighted and the yeah. names are copyrighted and this, that, or the other, and you sort of segmented that out and have a massive legal team to do it, much more difficult to do. Like, for example, somebody's not going to do that with Overwatch because each of the I, I would imagine at this point anyway from Blizzard, each of the characters Correct. are yeah, copyrighted. Yeah. The entire game and premise as a whole is copyrighted. They, Just give her bigger boobs, bigger butt, maybe I, slightly different power. <laughs> They also don't sure. have the same level of customization in their games, I would argue, than something like Warcraft did, where right. there's a lot of rule sets you can play around with, whereas a majority of what Overwatch has is pretty typical of third-person shooters right. yeah. in general, so first-person shooters, um, or team shooters. Yeah. Um, the last piece of news involving Reforge First person team shooters. is uh, the fact that it is so bad and has such a heinous score that fans are so angry... Blizzard is giving instant refunds to anybody who purchased the game. And wow. they gave a very long statement, a very long statement. I'm not going to read all of it. But essentially, they're saying that we have seen the concerns. We are working every way possible to fix them. However, if anybody wants to bow out now, you can bow out now. Damn. So that is just... Whoo, I wonder if they're hoping that everybody Raising just bows out. They don't have to hold on to it anymore. Raising the white flag, we're admitting defeat here. We're committed to wow. the development and support of the game. We hope you'll keep an eye out for this week's patch and future updates to let uh, let us know what you think about the continued fine-tuning. Until then, thank you, as always, for your support and passion for, for Warcraft 3. We appreciate all your feedback and we'll continue to keep Warcraft 3 community updated on everything we're working on. I wish they did that with Anthem. I agree. <laughs> I agree 100%. Because I would not be so salty about it. 
But it's just... It's, I might have gone for a, for an EA subscription, you know? It's fascinating to me to see... We couldn't do it on PlayStation at the time. No, no, fascinating no. to me to see uh, them so have such a heel turn, especially considering the fact that, th- let's be frank here, Blizzard has not been hanging out some bangers recently. I mean, Diablo 3 was awful, and they were stringent on that purse string. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, WoW Classic's taken off pretty well, but... That's true. That's true. Yeah. So. But I mean, uh, that's just a revival of literally the same yeah. game. Literally, like, and back to the vanilla. Got it. Guys, hey, we'll we'll play play people, sp- people be willing to spend money on yeah, this. Yeah, we, let's we do get it. the old one with new models. Enjoy. <laughs> uh, well, we've gone through all of our. Well, there's that other thing with uh, Rocksteady. If you want to talk about that. No, I think it's or, time to close shop. Okay. Yeah, we we we, we filled it enough hair. Okay. Because I think that was the end of our important. Sh- important. important sh- and now it's time for Last Call. Last Call! You don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. Uh, bellboy. Of course, we're going to talk about our special guest bellboy. here that Mr. Plova has brought to us here. Some sweet water, beautiful beers. Wonderful. Hold on. Uh, Hold on. Thank you, Bellboy. Yes, but, I appreciate you. Thank you so much. What is this? I got you guys a <laughs> present. You got a shirt? I did. I got everybody shirts. Here's Jester. I'll, I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I put you pulled that out. I thought. Oh, I thought you. they were all going to be Jester heads. Oh, look at that! Oh, thank you. That's very Thanks, sweet. Bud. Not a problem, guys. I appreciate it. We'll give you a hug after show. Yeah. yeah. Put that on for our, ooh, so and special. And it's actually made with an upgraded uh, shirt quality. Oh, thank so it you. actually feels good yes. compared to the other quality. The cardboard. The I mean, one. the great shirt. Yeah, we the have. cardboard. That Please is a... feel free to yeah, buy our shirt. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. This yeah, is very yeah, sweet. Thanks, Cheers. Bud. Cheers. Cheers. Bud. That, was, that was a good moment. I might cry. Of course, we also have a little sip here. I'm a little parched. Yeah. Um, our Strange Garage, which continues to update with wonderful, wonderful videos. Resident Strange Garage individual. P- pitch your ship. Pitch your ship. I said ship. I know. I know. He didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I said ship too. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Um, <laughs> no, um, no, they'll never know what I said. Strange Garage. Um, so the episode didn't go out last week, apparently, like we had wanted to. <laughs> so it should have gone out this week. I, we'll see. I, I'm not sure yet. I'll have to double check with him. Aren't you in charge of this? Yeah, I'm not actually. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Right. Good to know. Well, reach out to uh, Jaeger Call. 3D. Pitch the blame. Re- re- uh, reach out to Jaeger 3D and complain to him. Um, no, um, so that, that's that's supposed to be dropping. We have still more episodes coming out on that, especially uh, one with a big collective GoPro setup. Anyway, of like six of us going out to ride dirt bikes and whatnot. One of which with uh, our bellboy himself. Um, so uh, you know, interesting times to be had there. Eating the dirt. Um, and our first race uh, is coming up two weekends after today. Or after awesome. actually, even after you guys are seeing this, two weekends after. Uh, so that'll be what is that? The fifteenth. Sure, that works. Yeah. yeah. So we have a race yeah. coming up there. Um, so all of us are going to be strapped with GoPros, ready to go, recording that kind of thing. It is a hair scramble race, so it is going to be two hours traversing like a three to four mile oh, wow. track, two to three laps. No, oh, are you using the bike you fixed up? I am indeed. Nice. Um, That's going to be so cool. So I just ordered new plastic sport, so it's going to be all cleaned up. We're going to order new graphics kits and all that stuff, have some clean stickers on it and that kind of thing. Nice. It's going to look nice and That's awesome. running out there. And then after that, we're going to be cleaning them up and doing that kind of stuff before nice. the next race. So oh, yeah. we're supposed to be racing once every two weeks, so we should have new videos coming out for that. The exception to that is going to be the race that comes at the end of this month because we are going to be going to PAX East. Ah, yes, the infamous PAX East. I would indeed. love to go, but I'm moving into my new home. Ooh. I'd love to go, but uh, I'm lazy. He's gonna, he's, gonna be helping, he's gonna be helping somebody move into his new home. I'm gonna be sick that week. <laughs> of course, we do have our deal of the week, which is a very interesting one. Of course, a humble bundle. They're my favorites to go to. But this humble bundle is the Train Simulator 2020 bundle. I love it. You heard it, folks. That is well, five, eleven. 17 games you can get for $12. It's a yeah, it's the game and then all the expansion packs. Is what okay, so I'm gonna have to reach out to my father for this one. Okay, dad, if you're watching, uh, not likely, but if dad, if you're watching, leave yeah. a comment below. Check, check, yeah, leave a comment below and then check this out because you're gonna want to pick that up. And also, your son I has li- a problem and you need to talk to him about it. <laughs> Masturbation, needs and to what's stop. really cool <laughs> is that this is supporting the Girls <laughs> no. Inc. Girls Inc. Uh, is inspires all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Our comprehensive approach for a whole mm. girl development equips girls to navigate gender, economic, and social barriers to grow up healthy, educated, and independent. What I thoroughly enjoy about Humble Bundle is that if you do not appreciate the um, 
organization they're putting the donations to, which they pick one for every one of their bundles. You can swap it out for whatever don- organization you want. They have really? a plethora of them in their database. As long as it's in their database, you can donate to whoever the hell you want. That's awesome. So, Interesting. But I do recommend keeping up with what they do because they do a nice rotation around. Girls yeah. Inc. is pretty cool. Girls like to code too. I'm all about it. Uh, of course, I have two weekly readings this, this you week. Guys aren't, you guys aren't like sick and tired of looking at a bunch of sausage fests in the uh, 100% in the I would office. love some women in the office. <laughs> um, not that I don't like staring at this beautiful face. Aww. Although I don't work there anymore. I know. Shh. <laughs> the illusion of camera. Out of Mark. <laughs> um, it looks like there's two weekly readings this week. Who would have thought I picked both of them? One of them is about Amazon's Mechanical Turk. If you have never heard of this service, because I had never heard of this service, it is a service that is essentially like a catch-all for anything you need that employees are basically hired on almost as uh, contractors, make very minimal money, and are told to do... Countless things. The point is supposed to be that you can call in and be like, hey, I need tech support, but I don't want to wait in a line. I'll just contact somebody here. They can go find someone for me. Yeah. But what ends up happening is there are people like calling in or writing in and be like, hey, recount the most painful memory you have. And these people have to go through the most traumatic memory they've ever been through, according to the guidelines for what they signed up as part of this They're job. They're asking them personal questions. Correct. Yeah. And so there's a lot of issues with how that's being handled right now. So you should read it. Very interesting. The second article is uh, how Twitch is encouraging fan base our fans to obsess over viewership numbers. So we have a bunch of people here on Twitch under the network ourselves. As a matter of fact, B Scotch and Dotch was just invited to a special um, Twitch research program where they oh, cool. want him to possibly even fly out to San Francisco and talk to him. Really? Yeah, really cool stuff. But he does a really good job. Those numbers are very, very big on how they push channels. And so this dives into the psychology behind that and what they do to try and push fans to focus primarily on those numbers rather than necessarily the content that viewers are making. So also very cool. Interesting. People like seeing numbers. Numbers to them mean something. Oh, yeah. I mean, it it means business. It means advertisers. It it means everything. So Yeah. And, of course, you can always talk to us on our Discord. People are coming in each and every week to come and talk to us. Not us specifically, because people don't like me. But, <laughs> but the, there's a lot feel of free to join us. Different uh, people to talk I'll hold to. Hold that for a second. It's a, it's a diverse group of people, which is really cool. Correct. Yeah, there's plenty of conversation there, and it's not just game or technology focused. We literally talk about everything. So yep. feel free to join in. Hit up the general chat. You can find us there. And don't worry, Yeager. We'll find you a deal or whatever. You're like, hey, I'm looking for a TV. He's like, gotcha. Correct. <laughs> uh, and finally, of course, we have our question of the week, which I pulled last second uh but this is an interesting one so what piece of media do you love and recommend to those around you but they cannot get into i think i'm gonna go first because i already know my answer my answer is bojack horseman i adore the show (laughs) today i finished it because the finale came out and i will say as someone who watches a lot of content probably one of the most impactful television shows I've ever watched. For me personally, the way the progression happens and how it hit me at the end was really, really kind of gut-wrenching. Honestly, I, I had to take a moment at work I mean, to it's, walk out It's the door. a comedy series. It's made as a comedy series. Correct. But there's a lot of really dark stuff that happens. So there, there was yeah. a poem... There's a lot of really grown up like situations. Correct. Yeah, it is not a children's show. Yeah. There was a poem that was read in the second to last episode, and this isn't going to spoil anything for you because I know you're going to watch it, but I do want to read this poem because okay. I, I think it's it's very big. So um, give me a moment, if you will, bear well. Uh, the weak breeze whispers nothing. The water screams sublime. His feet shift, teeter totter. Deep breath, stand back. It's time. Toes untouch the overpass. Soon he's water bound. Eyes locked shut but peek to see the view from halfway down. A little wind, a summer sun, a river rich and regal, a flood of fond endorphins bring a calm that knows no equal. You're flying now, you see things much more clearer than from the ground. It's all okay, it would be, were you not now halfway down. Thrash to break from gravity, what now could slow the drop? All I'd give for toes to touch, the safety back at top. But this is it, the deed is done, silence drowns the sound. Before I leapt, I should have seen the view from halfway down. I really should have thought about the view from halfway down. I wish I could have known about the view from halfway down. That is a really good one. And just wow. hearing that, the emotion behind that, a lot of personal reasons for myself, but yeah. also just yeah, yeah. in but general. I mean, it's a relatable experience, of, especially with those who you know have you know family members or loved ones who have gone through depression or may have committed suicide. Yeah, I can totally see where you're yeah. going from. Yeah. And, and even, you know, not someone who deals with depression like 
seeing that viewpoint yeah. in that poem was pretty powerful. Agreed. Yeah, and I'm kidding. Just as a other note, this poem I think is a very good reminder that it sometimes seems like there's no hope and that at the very end of the day that you should just leave it all, but you'll be surprised at how much you want of as you get to the point where you can't pull back. So reach out. Feel, somebody's always there to talk to you. I can promise you that yep. for sure. But to move on, I, I Bojack is definitely something that has been with me for the years that has been out. I picked it up right away and laughed with it. And it is still a funny show, but the way it has kind of changed my perception of what shows can talk about emotionally. It reminds me a lot of The Good Place, but The Good Place is something that people pick up pretty well, whereas Bojack's something they kind of leave behind. Mostly because Good Place is kind of chipper compared to Bojack, which can be super depressing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just something that I will be thinking about for quite some time and won't be able to let go. So I got you. Yeah. Who's next? Well, you should have went last. <laughs> Now I'm depressed. <laughs> well, I needed a, a bit of do upper after uh, that. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I feel you on that, but <laughs> Jesus. Um, normally, my issue deals, like, when it comes to our group of friends, we're all pretty, like, when it comes to different games or, like, yeah, I've seen Brianna flourish with the different games she's been playing between Assassin's Creed and um, God of War. Yep, like, absolutely. she's been flourishing in the type of game. She, but, like, I cannot get my dad to read a book <laughs> oh wow really wow okay he likes reading like technical manuals and stuff like that i can't get him to read something that he enjoys outside of that for pleasure he's it is torture for him and i'm like there is entire worlds in books he's like i just don't know what to do with myself because i'm trying to find him a hobby and i'm like find a book series you like and stick to it man <laughs> But because uh, uh, everybody else in my life, I mean, everybody's pretty fluid. Like, you know, you say, hey, you want to play a game? Yeah, sure. Hey, you want to play play this board game or card game? Yeah, let's learn it. He's the only one in my life that is just totally <laughs> bites me on one. He hates playing games because my mom's super competitive and she gets violent when she loses. And then <laughs> my sister's also a very good winner. So playing games with them is kind of hard sometimes, though. we love I do it anyway because I'm super competitive and I love watching their demise. I'll do that. But. In him, he's the only one that I have trouble like getting him to like do stuff that I like and watch like Game of Thrones, for instance. Yeah, he watched the first three seasons, he was into it, and then just stopped. And I'm like, I'm watching it with him. I'm like, let's just keep going. And he's like, man. And I'm like, ah! what? <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me. How do you just stop watching the show in season three, man? <laughs> you just watched him kill his dad. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So okay. it's like. I think that was season three. I'm not totally sure. Yeah, don't, regardless. Don't hang me. But, you know, it's just, I don't know. He's, he, he's a hard one to deal with when it comes to trying to get him to an, any entertainment. What, like, he'll drop shows, movies, books, doesn't matter. Just, he'll start someone and leave it. What book are you trying to get him to read specifically? Uh, anything. I literally can't get him to read anything specifically. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. I can, get, I can get him an airplane magazine. He'll sit there and read that thing through and through. That's it. <laughs> So I might just go get him a picture book of airplanes. You give him a Skyball, and he's just like, oh, this is yeah. great. And you're like, why won't you read a 50-page book, but you'll read Skyball? Oh, and the worst offender out of any minute in my life is Michael Coleman. Yeah. Oh, 100%, yeah. I've been trying call to get... Out. Oh, it's call him out. One of our out. viewers knows who he is. Yep. <laughs> uh, he. I've been trying to get him to read 1984 since college. Wow. I gave him my copy. If you and I have reminded him at least book. once per year, and I mean at least once, because I'm pretty sure this year I've only done it once, but it's at least two or three times a year. I'm like, I gave you this book. Something will come up. Yep. And he's like, I'm like, 1984, and he goes, oh, yeah. I'm like, yeah, read the book. Jesus, you've had it for like seven Not years. 1984 and Animal Farm are the two that you Correct. that everyone at some point should read. Ten yep. percent. Animal mm -hmm. Farm, quick read, super powerful. Yep. 1984, pretty much the same quick read, but also just it, it's powerful, but in the sense of like a much more narrow perspective. Fahrenheit yep. 451, right behind them. Yeah. To our viewers who know of this gentleman, you should bother him every day <laughs> every with text day. messages <laughs> and Marco Polos and tell him, hey, 1984. Just that's it. Don't tell him to read it. Just say 1984. <laughs> <laughs> just bombard him with text messages. Correct. 1984. Correct. What about you, Mark? So, it's um, going to be some stupid flight sim. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> so mean. So, there is a small YouTuber. Okay. Um, he is not 
a small YouTuber now by any means, but at the time when I had, like, I, I'm going to sound like a hipster just because I've, I've been watching like his mm. channel since like 2014. Mm -hmm. Um, and he had at the time, I think like 300,000 subscribers, but he used to do not just flight Sims, but he'd do like European Euro truck simulator or American truck simulator. He'd also do train simulator. Uh, he did Train Simulator every now and then, but that was before the new ones come out. Mm -hmm. um, the one that's available yeah. for the Humble Battle. Um, but he also did other things like um, GTA 5 role playing. Um, you know, some of that stuff that's blown yeah. up now, that kind of thing. But he's done a lot of that for a long time now. I mean, like, I can take you through some of his stuff of like, you know, like there's a flight sim video, there's a bunch of the GTA 5 role playing videos, there's the American Truck Simulator, like all kinds of stuff. And, and I would watch the content a lot and I would sort of post about it. And I even tried to like, almost replicated at the time, especially whenever I was actually making content on YouTube because for about a three or four month stint, that kind of thing, I was pretty regular of doing one video a week kind of thing. Um, and he does it for a job now. Um, but he has gone from 3, 300,000 subscribers to over a million, that kind of thing. And I, for the first time, had heard somebody else, one of my friends say, oh yeah, I saw this guy, Jeff Faviano on YouTube. <laughs> and so I was like, son of a... I have been talking about this. <laughs> Damn it. Ah. But um, no, I enjoy that content, that kind of thing. And it was always sort of like, this is what I like. This is what I enjoy, that kind of thing. But nobody else was really on that level with me. So yeah. like even like even my dad, who like talking along the same lines, like my dad enjoys the simulator stuff, like enjoys the flight sim. He enjoys, you know, train simulator, but he just won't watch the videos because to him, it's the, the whole philosophy of. Oh, why would you watch somebody play video games when you could play the video game yourself? Why would you watch football when you could play football yourself? Yeah, Dad. Anyway. Um, Does he play Madden? No. It's exactly. Madden season. Tell him to go play football. No, he has a PlayStation 3 because he used it as a Blu-ray disc player. That He never really played games on it. Anyway. but Cheapest uh, Blu-ray player at the time. Yep. Yeah, it really was. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. It, it was simulator stuff has always been like sort of my niche thing of this and I've always been sort of like a different person in the aspect of or in the realm of strange gaming for example that kind of thing of I enjoy the simulator stuff with like one or two other people that yeah. kind of thing and then everyone else is very much either casual or very much like a, a hobbyist of, of players like you guys are, are very in-depth hobbyists in this you know that kind of thing where you guys are achievement hunters a lot of times in this yeah. you know, that kind of thing so trophies um, but thirsty uh, I already got two this year, <laughs> but I but I do this for casual, and I do this because I enjoy the the realism of things, you know. So like, it, it's just a whole other level of content that I'll watch alongside that. That's just completely different. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. yeah, I'm right there with you. Please let us know what content that you love that you can't get any of your friends or family to play. Leave it in the comments floating above the dispatcher himself. And until next time, cheers. 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 Yeah. So the reason why I wasn't going to give.